Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and Jews in Israel and around the world are being saved like never before. There is a revival in Israel. We give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Israel is at war, a physical war and a spiritual war. Terrorist acts from Hamas and Hezbollah, rockets pounding Israel, shootings in Israel, stabbings. It's a war zone. The Israeli IDF are in Gaza right now, bombing the tunnels of Hamas. In the midst of ground zero here in Israel, in the midst of this war, we are preaching the gospel south to north. Many are coming to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, to pray at the Kotel, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for the peace of Jerusalem, praying for their family members, praying for the IDF, and praying for all the nation of Israel to be protected. As believers in Yeshua, we know that no one makes it to the Father, but only through Yeshua, only through Jesus. As Yeshua, Jesus, God, said it with his own mouth. John, Yohanan, chapter 14, verse 6. Yeshua, Jesus, said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We are heartbroken for what's happening in Israel. We're heartbroken for the hostages in Gaza, for those who fell, for those who were murdered, massacred, butchered. We know that Israel is under grace. The nations are under grace, but grace will come to an end and there'll be great judgment. That's why it's so important that the gospel goes forth. As the Messiah of Israel Ministries team were praying, I began to share the love of Yeshua, to preach the gospel in the Kotel area to those who were praying for protection. I noticed a Jew praying at the wall, crying with children around him. The children looked terrified. I asked him, what are you doing here? He said, I come to pray. Israel's at war. He introduced himself as Amos Kalman. I introduced myself and he asked me, what are you doing here? I told him, I come here to share the truth, to share the only hope that Israel has. Amos said, Kuli Ozen, I'm all ears. He wanted to hear the hope of Israel. Amos said, tell me about this hope. I told Amos, God loves Israel, and that's why he's protecting Israel, because he wants to bring him into salvation. He wants to bring him into eternal hope, not just temporary hope. Amos said, I believe in God. I said, but do you know God? He says, I know. Elohei Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I said, Amen. But do you know who he is? He said, what do you mean? You can see the kids were all frightened and lost themselves, holding their head. I asked Amos, what atoned for sins thousands of years ago? He said, the blood sacrifice. I said, do we have blood sacrifice now? He said, no. I said, so what atones for sin? He said, prayer. I said, can you show me in the Bible that prayer atones for sins? He says, I can't show you in the Bible. I said, why not? I said, because it's not there. I said, then where is it? He said, it's in rabbinic books. I said, do you believe rabbinic books or do you believe the Bible, the Tanakh? He said, I believe the Tanakh, but the rabbis interpret the Tanakh. I said, yes, but you said that it's not in the Tanakh, so how can they interpret something that's not there? Amos was now getting confused. He didn't have an answer. Finally, he said, you have a good point there. I never thought about that. Amos then asked, what does this have to do with the hope of Israel and the war? I said, everything. Because without atonement for sins, they can't be a relationship with God. Without a relationship with God, there cannot be eternal life. God is preserving Israel, number one, because Messiah has to come back. Number two, for Israel to repent and turn to him before it's too late. Amos then asked, come back? I said, yes, Messiah already came. Amos now was asking, where does the Bible say that Messiah came? Praise Yeshua. The prayers of the believers were working. Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was working. I turned the Bible to Yeshayahu Nun Gimel, Isaiah 53, and read together with Amos. As I was reading... Slowly, slowly, his kids started to come in to listen. Finally, we reached Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Amos said, 
we can't read this. This is a forbidden chapter. I asked him, does God forbid the word of God? He said, no. Would God forbid the Tanakh? He said, no. Then you've answered yourself. There is no such thing as a forbidden chapter. That was invented by the rabbis, so you won't see who Messiah is. That's why there is no more blood sacrifices, because the Messiah took it upon him once and for all. No works, prayer, or anything can bring salvation. Only the blood of Messiah. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. And this is the hope of Israel. This is the hope of salvation. The children were in shock. Amos was in shock. Finally, he asked, who is this Messiah? It was time for the full gospel. His name is Yeshua, Jesus, who died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day, and by his blood, all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins and eternal life. And that is the hope of Israel. That is the hope of all the nations. And that is the hope to win this war. Because this is not just a physical war. It's a spiritual war. Yeshua came for all nations. Amos didn't say a word. Finally, he asked, where does it say that the Messiah came for all nations? It says it everywhere. Psalms 117, verse 1. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. Hallelujah. God is calling you and your family to salvation. God is calling Israel to salvation. The fact that you and I met here today is not a coincidence. It's a divine appointment. You came here searching for prayer, and God is giving you the answer. Almost said, this is a lot for me to grasp. I see what the Bible says. I see what the Tanakh says. Praise Yeshua. He asked me if I have more Bible verses. I began to share many Bible verses with him. Micah 5.2, Jeremiah 23, and many Bible passages. We exchanged contact information and pray that Amos will be in contact with the ministry, that he will have visitations, dreams, and come to know that Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. One thing is certain. Amos and all those that heard the gospel will never be the same again. And for this, we give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Yeshua. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, Jesus. Her Yeshua like a blazing torch. And he's coming back with fire in his eyes as that blazing torch to come back and take everything that the enemy has stolen as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And until then, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. In fact, we will increase the preaching of the gospel during the war. We give all the glory to Yeshua, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Continue to stand with us and pray for us as we preach the gospel in the midst of a war zone here in Israel. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Seth Port, sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Great I Am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 121, verse 4. The God of Israel will never sleep and he'll never slumber.